Hey, welcome back to the series that we've been doing on Reputation. I've been going track by track to see if I can find a deeper meaning within each of the songs. Today we're on another infamous track five, which are known to be one of the most heartbreaking tracks on the album. Uh, so today we're on that track five, which is titled Delicate. So let's just get started. We have a lot to get through. We're going to be listening to the audio, the music video, the making of a song, and a live performance. So strap in and let's get started. They sing for the best. My reputation's never been worse, so you must like me for me. We can't make any promises now, can we, babe? But you can make me drink. Dive bar on the east side, where you at? Phone lights at my nightstand in the black. All right, so let's read some of those lyrics. I do also want to preface that I definitely have heard this song before. This was very popular on the radio when it came out. And also I did see it live at the Eras tour very recently. So I did have a little perspective coming into this one. But the first lyric says, this ain't for the best, my reputation's never been worse. So you must like me for me. We can't make any promises now, but you can make me a drink. Dive bar on the east side where you at. Phone lights up the nightstand in the back. Come here, you can meet me in the back. Dark jeans in your Nikes, look at you, oh damn, never seen that color blue. Just think of the fun things that we can do. Um, I think that intro and what the chorus essentially is, is seems very vulnerable. And I know that's kind of like the archetype of a track five, but it just feels like it really comes from a vulnerable place just because she's acknowledging that it was like one of the worst times to like her. So the fact that anyone was willing to give her the time of day or attention really meant a lot to her. And, and then I know you guys are gonna tell me something for talking about the song Peace again, but I feel like this also reminds me a little bit of that just because when it says we can't make any promises, that's just saying like, let's let this, let's let this become exactly what it's going to be. Let's not put any, let's not put any pressure on this situation. Let's just enjoy it while it lasts because when you stand with her, you're never going to have peace. But I digress on that. But then another interesting part is I feel like Taylor Swift has also mentioned dive bars a couple of times throughout her discography. Um, one that comes to mind was Invisible String. Uh, she said something along the lines of like pulling out of dive bars and finding the right person. So maybe this is a reference to the dive bar that kind of flows throughout her discography. And then I guess I'm just comparing it to every folklore song. But this also reminds me a little bit of uh, Cardigan, and I don't really know why, maybe just because she references clothes, but I feel like I remember dancing in your Levi's um, and dark jeans in your Nikes. It's just all very like cinematic story where I'm thinking like the cobblestones and folklore uh, in Cardigan and then like going to that dive bar that it's a part of a visible string and that she'll never be able to give this person peace. Like, I'm just like creating a movie <laughs> in my head with these songs. But let's just keep listening. Is it cool that I said all that? Is it chill that you're in my head? Cause I know that it's delicate. Is it cool that I said all that? Is it too soon to do this yet? Cause I know that it's delicate. also will mention is i don't know if it's going to be mentioned in the making of the song videos but 
I wonder if like the robot voice or the production that she kind of chooses with some of these songs is like showing the vulnerability that she had maybe at that time. And maybe I'm reaching, but uh, I noticed it the most in this song. She's using that like vocal thing that's going on with the robotic in the back. It's like the parts where it's saying like, because I like you, isn't it delicate? It's just almost like it adds to the vulnerability. It's like you don't even know the real person that you're talking to because you're masking certain things about yourself um, in order to like not allow yourself to get hurt again. Um, again, I might be very much reaching on that. And it could just be a styled production of 2017. But it's just something that I kind of think about when I'm listening to this one. Is it cool that I said all that? Is it chill that you're in my head? Cause I know that it's delicate. Is it cool that I said all that? Is it too soon to do this yet? Cause I know that it's delicate. Love the way that she delivered that bridge it's almost like breathy in a way i don't really know how to describe it but it was very like just cool sounding i guess you could say but going back to the second verse in the bridge the second verse said third floor on the west side me and you handsome your mansion with a view do the girls back home touch you like i do long night with your hands up in my hair echoes of your footsteps on the stairs stay here honey i don't want to share i feel like that is very much describing the initial hookup or connection with this person and maybe their relationship's kind of new-ish or she gets jealous kind of because she doesn't want to share this person with other people. Um, it also kind of reminds me a little bit of to all the girls you loved before because it kind of references like the girls that he's loved previously. It's like, do the girls back home touch you like I do? And I even said in that video that to all the girls you loved before, um, it's almost like you're saying uh you've tried the rest but now you have the best like i verbatim said that in that video and i feel like that's another way of saying this is like um again you have me now so so now is so now you're good to like forget about every single person that you've ever met because you're not going to find better <laughs> and then the bridge did say sometimes i wonder when you sleep are you ever dreaming of me sometimes when i look into your eyes i pretend you're mine all the damn time um instead of making connections to every other song in taylor swift's discography I wonder if this has any types of connections to Ready For It because I feel like that whole song was about being patient because you're going to end up with the person that you love. Um, and this kind of goes back to that dreaming thing because in Ready For It, she said, Island dream, lights down low, and in the middle of the night in my dreams. Um, so I feel like there might be some sort of connection between those two songs considering I know this whole album and a lot of her future discography is about one relationship. But overall, I think I really like the soft pop vibe also from her. It's just such like a mellow hit to me. don't think i mentioned it but the whole like chorus is almost just so anxiety ridden where every single decision that you make in this relationship is making you wonder did you already ruin it by taking it too far like she's clearly in love with this person very early on and she's like wondering like when is it the right time to not come off like i am moving way too fast in this relationship all right so that was the end of the audio of delicate um i will admit for a track five i like that it is a little bit more positive outlook than most of the other ones that i've heard um i think the way i described it earlier was a good word is 
it still had the vulnerability of a track five, but it doesn't make you want to go sob. <laughs> so I kind of like that she does have a little versatility in these track fives. But now let's get into the music video. Um, I have heard the song before, but I don't think I've seen the video. So this will be a kind of a new experience. They sing for the best. My reputation's never been worse. So you must like me for me. We can't make any promises now, can we, babe? But you can make me drink. man that's kind of a fun way of showing the reality of being a celebrity i don't want to say the harshness because i feel like a lot of people at the end of the day will say it's a small price to pay for the things that you've gotten but i feel like the beginning of that video kind of showed interviews and almost looked very uninterested in it and then also um she's always with four security guards so i feel like you don't feel like maybe you have any type of privacy in a way and then also she got attacked by a stalker. So it really is maybe just kind of showing the day in the life of being your favorite celebrity. Cause I like it. Listen for the best. My reputation's never been worse. So you must like me for me. Yeah, I want you. We can't make any promises now, can we be? I feel like that was like the definition of like she was just in a silly goofy mood. <laughs> that all that is it chill that you're in my head? Cause I know that it's delicate. Oh, is she like a vampire? Is it cool that I said all that? Is it too soon to do this yet? Okay, no, no, <laughs> she's not a vampire. Uh, clearly, she's not being seen by anybody. I just saw like the no reflection in the mirror, and I immediately thought, okay, yep, this is a vampire. <laughs> Ah, oh, the shoes and like the dress rip was kind of the perfect visual representation of what I would describe as like feeling weightless or that pressure finally coming off of you. Because when she, I feel like she walked into that hotel, she was having those feelings of being burdened with the things that were going on in those moments. And then the minute that no one can see her or know anything about her, she kind of feels uh, free, I guess, in a way. Me and you, handsome, you're a mansion with a view to the girls back home, touch you like I do. Long night, keep your hands up in my hair, echoes of your footsteps on the stairs. This is totally dance like nobody's watching. <laughs> Except 500 million people have watched. <laughs> I also think what's kind of funny is that this is taking place in a hotel and I'm not sure if this is anything that anyone else had in their childhood, but I watched The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody a lot as a kid. And just because this is a hotel and she's like kind of running amok, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of like what I think a day in the life of Zack and Cody would be. <laughs> is it cool that I said all that? Is it chill that you're in my head? Cause I know that it's delicate. Is it cool that I said that was a really cool shot? Is it too soon to do this yet? Cause I know that it's that Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't Was that scene trying to tell us that like now it's no longer fun for her? Like, did she maybe realize that like I want to be seen in certain ways because I feel like being a celebrity, you have to 
want the attention in some sort of way. Like maybe it's not always 100% of the time you want to be followed. Like I completely understand that people would like boundaries in life. But at the end of the day, I feel like if you're choosing or liking being a celebrity, it's because you do like some sort of aspects of attention. And maybe now that she's kind of gone on without being noticed, she's kind of missing that part. Sometimes Is she barefoot in the subway? I don't know. We got to draw the line there. Okay, I'm noticing things in the background because I know that was a thing in the Ready For It video. I think the garage door just says delicate, but I noticed it. Oh, so I guess in the end, people started seeing her again. Maybe they see her in a different light now. I don't really know that connection. Um, I think the thing I don't know the most about this video is I feel like I kind of grasped what it was about, but I don't understand the significance of the note. Like the note seems like the catalyst as to why she was no longer being seen. But like, did someone significant send it to her? Like, I don't know how she ended up where she ended up at the end of the video. So if you guys know the perspective on that part, I'd love to know. But that was the music video. So now let's get into the live performance and then we'll do the making of the song last. This is a subscriber recommendation. So thank you for this comment. I got a couple of them telling me that either Amazon Prime or the Chicago one would be good. So I just chose the Chicago one. So let's just get started. <laughs> That was at the Eras tour and I kind of wish I would have gotten a video but I did not know that, that was happening before. Um, and you guys kind of told me that that was going to be a thing in the comment section as well. I guess I, I guess it's like a fan created thing, but it just says one, two, three, let's go bitch. <laughs> uh, and I guess it's because it's also the point where she kind of kicks up the song a little bit, but what a fun little like fan interaction or like a, if you know, you know, thing that you kind of have with your fans. What, how cool. The crowd is so loud. I know it's kind of a small venue, but you almost can't even hear her because that's how interactive the crowd is with this one. Like, even down to the background vocals, they got her on this one. Um, I feel like this is also just showing how much she shines in acoustic performances. I've said that a thousand times, but she never sounds better when she just has that guitar. I 
I still laugh at that line because it's just such a confidence. Like, I know they don't touch you. Like, <laughs> like it's just so funny. It's just kind of funny that that's the thing that's like you got to flex about. <laughs> but I guess if you got it, you got it. I really hope that everyone in this crowd got Eras Tours tickets because singing backgrounds, singing the whole song, doing the wave, um, and also clapping on beat, like this is like the best crowd ever and I feel like they deserve everything. <laughs> Ooh, that was so good with the bridge. She started off very low and then really raised it up. And I feel like that really just shows her versatility because those low notes sometimes aren't very easy. Like that's actually pretty impressive. I kind of want to hear it again. Okay, what a great performance. I really enjoyed that. And I feel like even with that performance, it just shows how connected she really is to her fans, where they have so many inside jokes and so many things all in one song. Like, that was just one example of how integrated this entire community really is. Um, but the last thing that we're going to watch is the making of Delicate. So let's get started with that one. Also, I would really love some perspective or some, like, information. I was like, what is Taylor Swift now? That was in the performance that we just watched in the opening to the making of the song says Taylor Swift now. So like if anyone knows exactly what this is, can you let me know? You must like me for me. Can I have that again? This ain't for the best. My reputation's never been worse so. You must like me for me. We can't make any promises now can we babe? But you can make me a drink. It's like me for me. I mean, for that's really cool. That that's actually made through a piano. I was not really expecting that. This ain't for the best. My reputation's never been worse, so you must like me for me. That da 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 da. I always like it when we get to see some different lyrics. Um, I like what she did better with the actual version, but I do like that end lyric where it says, 
Bert kind of says, I think about it all the time. I think that would have been a cool addition to that bridge. Sometimes I wonder if some sometimes I wonder when you sleep. Are you dreaming of me? No, do you ever dream of being with me? I think it's also kind of funny that it's almost like I'm taking a test and I know the answers. Um, before the person that made it, if that makes sense. It's like, I want to tell you like what the answer is. I want to tell you the actual <laughs> lyrics. So actually seeing her like struggle or like just like come up with it in that moment, it's kind of funny just because you know the end product and I'm like, come on, we're almost there. Like, <laughs> we almost got it. Two, One, three, four. Sometimes I wonder when you sleep Perfect. if you if you're ever dreaming of me or if you ever dream of me. I also think it's funny that that beat keeps coming in or the vocals keeps coming in right when she's about to figure it out. And then they're like, I would also feel the same way where it kind of stops your train of thought. And you can almost see that in her face. Like every time it starts, she's like, okay, wait, go back. All right, so that was the end of the making of the song. I really love the perspective of getting to see the songwriting process. Every time I watch one, I feel like I wish that she would have included those in other albums as well. But that was pretty much everything that goes along with Delicate. Tell me what you thought of the song. Tell me about any of the performances or videos that we watched in this video. Um, any perspective is greatly appreciated, but thank you for watching and I'll see you in our next video.